couple of days ago, while flying back from a dental conference, I had a conversation which, on reflection, may be useful to share for the benefit of everyone who finds themselves with an open bite, that is, you can't get your front teeth to contact, or who has the job of recommending treatment to patients with an open bite. If that's you, let me know if you find the following helpful. I was sitting beside a lady who discovered I knew something about occlusion, inevitably part of my answer to questions on what I'd been doing at a dental conference. So she told me that her 24-year-old daughter was being recommended jaw surgery to correct an open bite that had developed despite having orthodontics some years earlier. Or there was a lesser solution involving extruding some teeth and intruding others. What did I know about open bites? The best animation we have on the topic is this one, rapid bilateral condyle deterioration. I pointed out how the disc was displaced, which might have happened through trauma at some stage in a subject's life. Now bone is rubbing on bone, and we can see in the animation how the condyle is reducing in size too quickly for the teeth to adapt. It's easy to see that as long as the condyles are becoming smaller, the patient's bite will continually become more open. We then jumped to our repositioning bone animation so that I could describe the sort of changes that were being proposed in the jaw surgery for her daughter. These changes are fine if the TMJs and condyles are healthy. However, they're pointless if the TMJs and condyles are wearing away. Did she know if the maxillofacial surgeon or orthodontist had reviewed the health of the condyles? She didn't know, which suggests the TMJs were not being considered. Otherwise, I'd have thought the analysis and results would have been highlighted by the doctors. This led me to share, in summary, this story from Dr. Elaine Abe, as it sounded so close to the steps this lady's daughter was being guided towards. This is a sad one. So this is a young dentist, 28-year-old dentist. Uh, she comes in with a lot of pain, not really understanding what's going on. She listened to one of my lectures. And she said, okay, and I, I looked at my panoramic image and I don't see the condyles. Well, guess why? So she starts off and she gets her first uh, palatal expander and she gets phase one orthodontic treatment. And this is the panoramic image she gave me. And she does have condyles. I mean, they're, 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 they're very light on the picture, of course. You can't see them very well, but the condyles are there. And you can sort of guess where the outlines are. And they're relatively normal for a kid her age. Then after phase one, you know, teeth look nice. Uh, I mean, they're okay. Uh, she knows she's going to need to go through phase two. This is corrected, partially corrected at least. And she went through all of that. And then another panoramic image. You can still see the condyles. They're still there. We're three, down, three years down the line. We're 2004 now. Then 2007, another three years later, and now she's after phase two. After phase two, you can already see that the condyles have started shrinking. They're not as big as they were. They're a little bit smaller. And this is some form of either impaired growth, possibly combined with adolescent internal condylar resorption. We know this only happens with non-reducing discs. She underwent another orthodontic treatment and uh, eventually orthognathic surgery. This is after the second orthodontic treatment and after orth orthognathic treatment. So this is a lot better. This is 2019. And this is about when she called me or she called me maybe you know, a few months after this. So this is the surgery, but if you look at the condyles, well, you can find a little bit of it on the right side, but where's the condyle on the left? This is severe osteoarthritic damage. And even though she had surgery to reposition the jawbone, the lower jawbone, where do you think it's going to be going from now? That joint is just going to keep on melting away until you get, until the neck of the condyle is completely gone, until you get to the body of the ramus. She's definitely looking at possible, a possible prosthesis and actually possible bilateral prostheses. 
it's hard for me to tell you how often I see these. Uh, they're raining of these. They're raining these. It's raining these cases, um, and it's saddening all the time because the kids go through one treatment, another treatment, another treatment, a surgery, and it's not finished. It's actually just starting. She's 28. She's in pain because she's been treated for the past 18 years, not understanding why things are not getting or closing into an end. And this young woman was suffering terribly. And she's a dentist and did not understand what was going on. And th that it, it's sad already. Just this whole, just the story is sad already. But imagine being a dentist, having lived through all of that, and through your four years of dental training, you were not exposed to understanding what was going on in your own mouth. You can hear the frustration and sadness in Dr. Orbe's voice as he knows that had this patient been diagnosed correctly at a younger age, much of what she had suffered could have been avoided. The simple conclusion from this story is, if you're a patient with an open bite and are being recommended a surgical, jaw-breaking solution, insist that the health of your TMJs is checked and communicated to you. If necessary, go to a TMJ expert to have this reviewed. If you are a doctor who is recommending open bite fixes without knowing the health of the TMJs, please determine the health of the TMJs before proceeding. If the TMJs are not healthy, you're offering a highly invasive treatment that isn't going to solve the problem.